In this lesson, we're going to draw the fashion head and facial features. Start by drawing an egg roughly seven and a half to eight inches tall and about five inches wide. Okay, so she's eight inches from the top of her head to the bottom of her chin. Now we're going to divide her face in ha into um, sections that will represent the location of her eyes, the bottom of her nose, and the split between her upper lip and lower lip. So halfway down the face, you draw a line. It can be kind of a curved line because we are trying to think of this in three dimension. Draw a line for the eyes. Halfway between this line and the chin, draw another guideline. And that will represent the location of the bottom of the nose. And a little less than halfway, you'll have to just use your judgment here, draw a guideline for the mouth. Draw a soup can, roughly three and a half by three, so three and a half long by three wide, and indicate the shoulders. And Come down about an inch from the top of the head and draw a line to indicate the hairline. Another guideline we'll put in is a long rectangle which will represent the forehead and where the forehead is flat in the front and begins to go back on the sides of your head at the temples. Okay, now we're going to start the eyes. We're going to draw shapes that look more like whales than fish. So you don't want a fish, you want a whale. So it's flatter on the bottom and more rounded on the top. The eyes should be approximately an eye width apart. And eventually, when we finish refining the shape of the head, we'll have a half an eye's width between the outer corner of each eye and the edge of the face. Now we'll draw the irises. Make circles that aren't too big aren't too small. Look at yourself in the mirror and notice the size of your iris. You can color them in, leave them white for now, it doesn't matter. And then we'll draw the pupils and again not too big, not too small. It's nice to leave a little white, make them a nice rich black but leave a little white to represent that your eyes are moist and have shine. Then you can indicate a little bit of the tear ducts on the outer and inner corners. You can add a little lower eyelid, a little shading perhaps, so it looks like an eyeball is sitting in there. Make sure your pupils and irises are looking in the same direction. Then we'll do eyelids. Not too far away, not too close. We'll shade those with eyeshadow later. You can make a thick black line on the upper lid with just a few lashes indicated. And on the lower lid, keep them small and keep them pretty much to the outer corners of the eye. Now we'll draw the eyebrows, and this is where this rectangle comes in. The eyebrows seem to grow in the direction of your forehead and where that forehead changes direction, and that's where the peak of the eyebrows seems to fall. You can make them solid, you can indicate a few hairs, 
You can make them as dark or as light as you like. Now we'll move on to the nose. Float a, or draw a little ball bearing, small, larger than the eye wrist, in the center. And then from the corners of the eye, draw just a slightly angled line in toward this nose and float smaller ball bearings in this location. So they're above the bigger ball bearing. And this is just a guideline to begin the nose. Now for the nostrils, we're going to take little curved lines that sort of look like commas, upside down and backwards commas. Then we can darken this to look like an edge of the nostril. Don't connect anything, just let it fall like that. And then we can sort of take away some of this because it was only for a guide. And then because the nose protrudes from the surface of the face, we don't want to draw a line because it doesn't really have an edge. It's just a form that sticks out from the face. So you just want to use shading to make it feel like it's sticking out. You can put a little on the other side, but you're forming that bridge of the nose basically with shadow on one side or the other. It's your choice which side you would do that shading on that's more prominent than the other side. Okay, now we'll move on to the mouth. Here we're going to take an angled line from the iris, or the pupil rather, down to this mouth guideline and put little dots. You can shape this just a little bit. Again, look at yourself in the mirror, look at a friend, and concentrate on the shape of the line between their lips. That will help set up the shapes of the upper and lower lips. It sort of reflects this shape. You can draw that in, color it in. Maybe leave a little shine on her lower lip. doesn't have to be harsh outlines. It's just a, it's skin that's a different color than the rest of your face. Then we'll indicate the philtrum. Because it also protrudes from the face, so it casts shadows. Your lips protrude from the face a little bit, so you might have a shadow under your lip. Then we'll reshape the face with cheekbones, sink it in because she is a fashion face. Let her chin cast a shadow on her neck. And then we're going to come up here to her eyebrows and the bottom of her nose, eyebrows, bottom of the nose, curved up a little bit. And this is the location for her ear. So it's sort of like a parenthesis with a little shading in here. You can give her earrings. And then we'll move on to the hair at the temples. And the hairline, hair grows up and out from your scalp. So you don't want to have the hair look like it's painted on her head. You want it to puff up and then down. If she had short hair, it might just do this. 
If it's long, then the length of the hair and gravity will take over and it'll come up out of your scalp and then fall down. But you want it to look alive and not painted on her head. To make the hair looks like, look like it has dimension, make it very dark right at the side of her face. And that way it will feel like the hair in the front, in front of her ear, has volume. Okay, a little more makeup. A little more shading. Clavicle. And there's your fashion face. Now that you have tried the, the larger head and face, which is important because you have to draw these fe features large enough to see what you're doing. But now that you've done that, it's time to bring it down to the size you're going to use most often, which is the nine head croaky head. So there's your egg. Very quickly, we just put her in so you get an idea of scale. And then we're just going to focus on the face. But at least now you see just how large, or rather small, you'll be working on this fashion face for the figure. OK, in the same way that we did the large face, divide this egg in half, then divide this section in half, and then divide that section more or less in half with the mouth a little above the halfway point between the bottom of the nose and the chin. Remember where the eyebrows were located on the first one? With that forehead rectangle shape, which helps you know where the temples are and where the hairline is located. And then from the eyebrows around to the sides and from the nose over to the sides, that's the length of the ear for an adult. So try not to make them like little baby ears. All right, now we'll just start the eyes with the upper lid. Keep them an eye width apart. You can maybe, if your pencil is really sharp, darken them just a little bit at the outer corners of the eyelashes on the upper lid. Then with a very, very sharp pencil, make a small dot for the iris. At this size, there won't be room for pupils and shine. You'll just have to make the little dots. And you're just going to have to color eyeshadow on eyelids. So think of your pencil as just coloring rather than drawing some of these things. So here, we're just going to make two dots, very small dots for the nostrils, and the tiniest, faintest shadow for the nostril, the outer corner of the nostril. And again, just color with your pencil that shading on the side of the nose. Just barely color a little shading on one side of the philtrum. And then we'll just make a short little line for the split between the upper lip and the lower. And again, use your pencil, make sure it's really sharp, and simply color the lips in. You can do this with graphite pencil. You can do it with your colored pencil. You could even do it with the fine point of some of your markers. But you have to think of it as coloring rather than drawing because this head is way too small to outline details. 
of the facial features. Now, we have different kinds of hair we can do. You can have long, straight hair, but you don't want to use too many lines. You want to think of it more as using tone so the hair feels soft and not stringy. Or you can have curly hair, in which case you would either color in curls like this. You might even use the side of your pencil and swirl it around. And then just use the point of your pencil to indicate that volume I was talking about under the ear and around the jaw by the neck, and then maybe just a few lines to indicate the texture of the hair, but it's mostly tone. If you want bangs, draw the bangs the length you want. And again, use tone at the edges of the bangs, the lower edges of the bangs, and up at the top at the roots, and leave a little white area for shine, and then just a few lines to indicate the texture of the hair. Again, color. So think about having a very sharp pencil and think about using that pencil to make tone rather than line. That's it. Practice.